Leanne Gang, Nikki at Bunny Crafts Oxford here and welcome to my counter. Um, we are going to continue on our experiment of breaking acid dyes. So if you are new to this channel you can go back and watch one of my disaster videos when I tried to break some acid dyes and it didn't work. Well, it didn't work three out of four times. So it did work once. And for those of you that are, have watched that video, here's a reminder of what we ended up with. So this is the purple pop, which we did manage to break from purple into pink. This was Jacquard's Jet Black. We have, so purple pop is Dharma and it's a fluorescent dye as well. We have um, Dharma's Avocado and then Jacquard's Salmon. So... I thought, why not try and see if we can break these acid dyes using citric acid. So mixing them with citric acid and sprinkling. And, oh, my hair. You will see there's already a little bit of colour on. So I have my standard mini that I attach to my big skein. And you'll see there's already a little bit of colour on the bottom of the mini because I've already mixed the citric acid um, and the dye. I'm just going to fix this. And I used the mini to wipe, wipe um, the spoons off of because it was a lot of dye and it just, I could not, I could not just not use it. It, it, it just made no sense to me to just throw that dye away and just rinse it off. So... There it is. So I already had some purple pop mixed in this lovely fun cup. Um, and we know that breaks. Um, so I thought we can start with the other ones and work our way through to purple pop. I'm going to be using one of these masks because it makes my um, voice less muffled. Um, it is a KN95 mask, so it is quite a heavy filter. Filter. I normally use my um, dual filter respirator mask when I dye for clients and use um, dry powders. Um, I've protected my work surfaces and none of the equipment that you see me use today is ever used for dyeing I wear glasses so I don't need goggles but if I had my contact lenses I would wear goggles and I also have my protective gloves to keep my hands safe so on with the mask and it fits really nicely around my face actually it's really comfortable but it's still quite heavy duty because it's the same filter this mask is made of the same filter material that makes the filters on my respirator mask so I, I know that it is a safe mask to use. Okay so I thought we would start with the black and we'll do the black in one corner and I'm going to have to move the camera around a little bit because um, my countertop isn't really well made for filming. I normally would have had the camera on um my tripod and in a different place however my tripod is broken and i can't extend the legs anymore so there is that oh i've got a bit of pink transfer on here doesn't matter so we have this is the avocado this is not the black this is the black and let me show you mm, i don't know if you can see because it is a little bit dark I'm going to try and turn the light on to see if it makes it a little bit lighter in here. Is that better? I think that might be a little bit better. So the black has kind of got a bit of a reddish sort of purpley hue to it. Um, I know that when I speckle it does get red um, and blue speck sometimes but let's see what happens. I'm just going to, oh and the ratio of citric acid to powder is actually quite high. So I have a tablespoon of citric acid to a quarter of a teaspoon of dye. I'm just going to 
sprinkle it quite generously and obviously it will take a little while so I'm just going to do a little bit on the mini I think the mini I'm going to use mostly just to wipe my fingers so to get the dye off of my fingers so that I don't contaminate the different containers um, so I just want to, wanting to see whether you can see anything where I've wiped my fingers but not really oh I've got an itchy nose that's not helpful when I'm trying to do this right let's dry my hands do some more this is going to be a very strange looking mini what I might do is actually take it off of the yeah there we go I'll just have it on the side we can use it to wipe surfaces down afterwards as well so um Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, so the yarn is, let me just itch my nose, I really need to itch my nose. Oh. I think I had, yeah, I had one of my hairs, which is still attached to my head, by the way, that had snuck underneath the mask. It was tickling my poor little nozzles. It happens. Uh... Oh, I see like the tiniest bit of red. I will, I will allow, get this to absorb a bit more. Um, and see, I might do just a little bit here that's less, less heavy. Just to give it a chance. Okay, so next up is the avocado. Now, if this doesn't break, I'm going to be really upset because every time I speckle with this colour, it breaks. So this would be the one time it doesn't. Okay, so we should get some blue um, from the avocado. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going quite heavy. Right. There you go. And you can see there's like when I wipe my my hands, there's like a little bit of blue, but it's not it's not massive. Okay. Let's close this. Okay my hair and then so let's move things around this is what I mean about the, the counter being a little bit awkward is me having to just sort of shuffle you around okay so the experience I have had with the salmon is being that when I have speckled with it which has been twice is broken into yellow and then a sort of orangey pink color so i don't actually know whether it will do this today it comes across really light i'm kind of really liking the colors i mean even if they don't break this is going to be quite a pretty um yarn it'll be a bit mad but then so was our other colourway with the minis, so okay. Uh, seeing any breaking. I'm seeing like the smallest amount of breaking with the blue, with the black. So let me let me bring you closer. Let me just clean my hands. I don't want to get um, dye all over all over the camera. That would be very, very sad. 
So I'm seeing the tiniest bit of breaking just over here. There's like a little bit of red. You can see it over here. There's a little bit of red. So there's just every now and again there's red. But otherwise there isn't. Yeah, a bit of red here, a bit of red here, but not really breaking. The avocado is just green. Uh, and the salmon, there's like a little bit of yellow just there. But it's mostly... I guess with the salmon, there's maybe a little bit of yellow breaking here and there. But it's nothing. Yeah. What's really annoying me is this. Oh, I guess there's a little bit of blue. I guess the, 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 the avocado is really quite subtle. There is bits of blue just there, maybe. not sure but yeah with the black definitely you can see as i get closer you can see there are like red speckles that kind of come through um and that's because there is there is red in that dye i'm a bit frustrated with this one i was really hoping to see the yellow better there is i mean there is yeah the occasional yellow just sort of just just there oh, i guess they're getting oh okay they are on focus already around here you can see they're getting yellow halos so maybe we just need to wait for the rest of the citric acid to melt yeah because there's a bit more yellow here and there's yellow here, so maybe it will do what purple pop will do in a second when we use it. And that is you get a pink a purple center with a so a purple center with like a yellow little um not a yellow, a pink halo. Let's get you back in position and then we will do some purple pop. Okay. I think what I might do is just zoom you in just a little bit. There you go. And then do some purple pop. So my purple pop was already pre-mixed from a couple of days ago. I think that's purple pop. I'm really hoping that's purple pop. That's what it says on the note. But maybe it isn't. What are you? No, this is more black. Okay. So I already had black and I'd labelled it purple pop. Let me go get some purple pop premix. Okay. I should have known it was too dark and there's the purple pop. But that's okay because we still have a bit here left. So we're just going to sprinkle the purple pop. And the purple pop powder, the acid powder, is actually really fine I find. I'm just going to mix it over here with the black. I think it will look quite cool. Now, we know purple pop breaks. Purple pop, I think, breaks under pretty much every condition. Um, and I think I'm really tempted to keep playing around and just keep adding colour now. Um, I quite like the purple pop and the black. And let me just show you because this will this will break instantly when I clean when I wipe my fingers. So here is some white yarn. Here's some purple pop. Here's pink. Well there's the purple with the pink halo that we're just sort of curious about. And oh my god, this colour is so pigmented. There's literally just never ending. You can just keep wiping and there's just more of it. 
this mini is going to be a nightmare by the way to actually deal with I need more tissues no, I don't need tissues I need one of my trusty cloths um I'm actually you've probably seen my head <laughs> as I as I gaze deeply into this um there are a few areas where I'm definitely seeing yellow speckles so um let me bring you closer up again so yeah there's a few areas where I'm definitely see, seeing yellow coming out from the orange you can see it here so as it is dissolving there is definitely yellow so yeah it, it breaks but it breaks very subtly that's not a big deal we can instantly tell with the purple pop as we get closer you can see you can see the the dark the dark purple with the pink next to it and the dark purple in the center with the pink halo all around i absolutely love it when he does that it's just so beautiful um and it just it never ceases to amaze me how these colors are made and you can almost see the constituents constituent parts in them um this black is not dissolving very well and that's because it's a little bit older uh, let's get back to the black over here oh okay the black over here can you see so we've got the red let me find something to point with right where are we I lost it so we've got some red here we've got some red here that was blue I saw some blue and then I lost it what was it it was around here some oh no that's not here it was deeper in so there's a bit red, more red here and haha blue although I do wonder whether that is no, because I haven't really got any of the... Yeah, so there's just... There's lots of, like, red speckles. Yeah, you can see a bit of blue here. So there's more red. It's kind of got a bit of a purpley hint to it. Like, especially if you watch... If you... Oh, there's blue... bit of blue there. Uh, but, yeah, so there's definitely, like, a purpley hint to the black yeah you can see this sort of like blue just there very is it going to focus a little bit hey there you go so with the black as well you can see it sort of breaks and it breaks either as with red specks or you know there's just these very very fine blue specks it kind of gets this dusty purple halo around it and you can see a bit of the blue and purple there so sort of a success I love how fine the detail the fibers are and then with the avocado it just looks looks teal actually if you think about it but yeah so I think we can definitely see a little bit of breaking in the black we can definitely definitely see breaking in the salmon if I bring it closer and it'll focus in a second you can see all that yellow just sort of coming through and yeah you can see it more in some places than others and then obviously with the purple pop we can see the pink and the purple and the blues so woohoo okay let's put you back oh there's my finger on the camera okay I'm just going to take my mask off because at the moment oh wait, let's shut this before I take my mask off oh it's getting hot um so we have seen the breaking what I'm really tempted to do now is part of me wants to pad this down and then flip it 
and then just speckle really randomly but I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to flip it yep. going to spread the yarn out which is actually going to rub it against the cling film at the bottom um, and then what I'm going to do I'm dry my fingers and I think I'm just going to speckle one of each of the colours randomly all over, not too heavily, it will get heavy. Let's just get you a little bit higher up. Oh, you can get to see all of my mess now. Ta-da! No? Yes? No? It will do. Um, so we're going to... It's going to get heavier and heavier as we add more of the colours on. But mask back on. I think I'm going to start with the black. I'm not going to put much black here because we already have quite a bit of black on this side. Let's see. I'm just trying to get... Uh, I think that gets all of it in. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's the black. I'm just going to do that. I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out. Um, it is ridiculously random. Um, where the tie is up here, we're probably going to have large swaths of no colour. And I don't mind. I think this is going to end up being a pair of socks for me and a pair of socks for Tom. Um, using half of this and half of something else. We're going to go green. Well, I say green. Avocado. And just speckle quite generously sort of try and hit it where there is no actually I don't really I have no plan my plan was to see a bit of breakage and I think the one that I most wanted to see breakage for was the salmon um, because I, I could I could have sworn I've seen that um, yellow before and I was really surprised when it didn't when it didn't turn yellow um when it didn't break through dip dyeing but I guess it's just that the way the colours are mixed oh pardon my glove okay let's get a bit more of the of the salmon I want a lot of the salmon over here I think this is definitely a, car, a set of colours that I would have never ever put together. I don't think any, anyone would have probably put these colours together. Maybe the, the, the salmon with the purple pop because there's, there's that sort of orange and purple that's quite trendy sometimes. Um, oh and maybe the black with the salmon because that's kind of makes me think of koi carp together. Um, but yeah, so the purple pop, the other thing I'm going to do, and people are probably going to scream at me not to, but it is my video and my yarn and I will do what I want to. Um, I'm going to wrap this in a sausage. I'm not going to flip it anymore because I don't mind if we end up with large areas of white. I don't think we will. There will be white, but I don't think it will be that much. 
I want, I know what I want. Oh, I want my rip me to stop being a pain in the backside. Sorry. I, uh, I was born with a hole in my heart, um, which isn't a big deal. I think one of four babies get, gets born with a hole in their heart, and by the time they're four months old, it goes away. Um, but mine didn't, and it's in a weird place, and it gives me a rip me sometimes, and it can be quite uncomfortable because it's it just sort of feels like a cramp. Um, because things are, are sort of beating a bit too fast or a bit too slow or just kind of, yeah, not doing what they're supposed to. Um, so it was really funny when I was really young. By really young, I'm, I mean when I was sort of 18. Um, and I first came to the UK and there was, um, I had to go and have an ECG done just to check that everything was okay. And the nurse wasn't really familiar with my medical records because uh, they were all in Bulgarian and she could read them and I hadn't had them translated yet um, so she sat me down she plugged me into the machine and my heart rate was 105 and she was like oh this is not scary you need to calm down it's fine don't worry about it I just started giggling and I was like I'm, I'm not like I'm, I'm fine I'm not scared I've had this done so many times um my resting heart rate can be a little bit higher and she just freaked out and went and got the doctor and I had to explain and translate my medical records there on the spot to the doctor so that they don't end up putting me like in hospital or something because they were like you're 18 years old your resting heart rate should not be 105 um the way that I fixed that by was by lots of exercise. So every now and again, if you follow me on Instagram, you might see on my stories that I'm in the gym or I'm doing like I'm doing a spin class or I'm out on my bike or whatever. And essentially, this is good for everyone's um, physical health and heart health is having some some cardio. And by some cardio, I mean, just go on a brisk walk. You know, you don't need to run and jog and do spin and cycle for 50 miles or anything you just need to go on a walk and give your heart a bit of exercise and exercise does consistent exercise can slow the heart rate down so people that do marathons and stuff their resting heart rate can be as low as 50 um so that is what i did i have been looking after myself and looking after my heart for a little while now and now my resting heart rate is about 80, hmm, 70 to 80, depends on the day and just how annoyed I get. And now that you know a little bit more about my medical history, I'm going to roll this up in a sausage in the cling film and steam set it in my pot. And we are going to see what happens. There's going to be lots of extra colour on on the cling film that is going to get stuck to the yarn. This is definitely going to bleed when I um, when I wash it. I will let you know just how badly it bleeds when I wash it. Um, the thing that I love about the thing protecting my counter is this is a children's birthday party uh, tablecloth and it is wipeable so I'm going to because you can see there's like so the, the yarn this yarn I'm going to put in lots of water but as I move it around well it's not doing it now I was doing it a minute ago it's like creating lots of yeah it's doing lots of purple bits on the counter um yeah there you go leaving lots of purple on the counter so yeah it's going to get dunked in a bath of citric acid and water and 
yeah I'm I'm filming three videos at once so my brain is a little bit all over the place why am I doing this I'm not sure I think it's because I know over the next two weeks I'm going to have absolutely no time um, and that means that no videos will come out so um, enjoy the mayhem sorry I have spilled I need to tidy and I will see you when this is dry it's going to be absolutely hideous and a disaster and I'm going to love it anyway so see you in a little bit here is our dried yarn and um, I honestly don't know what to think so sorry if I'm shuffling I'm trying to get comfortable behind a camera um, yeah, I don't know what to think in terms of just the look of the yarn. Um, so do do leave your comments below. I'm really, really curious to know on the level of one, you know, one to ten, how ugly do you think this is? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's really weird. Like when I had the minis lined up when we first tried this with the dip dyeing, I absolutely love this colour combination. And a part of me still does. I think I'm gonna absolutely love making socks out of this um, because I don't I don't think I'm going to put this up on the shop. This is gonna be one of the few yarns which which I'm going to keep. Um, and this, so this is the mini I was using to wipe my uh, fingers on as I was speckling. And the reason why it has all gone completely pink is because we had that purple pop in there. Um, but we had very little to no acid and what I did was I basically just dumped it in um, in the pot of water that I was steaming this um, in. Uh, I dumped it at the bottom with uh, half a tablespoon of citric acid and just left it in there for about 40 minutes I think it was. And actually I left it overnight to cool down as well. And so you can see, oh, is it focusing? Will it focus? Probably not. There's, I think this is bits of our black, bits of our green. You can see the more orangey bits is where we have had the uh, salmon. And then I couldn't tell you where, if it, there you go. There's a bit of purple pop just there where you can see the, the purple just there. There's a bit more of the avocado and things. So this is interesting. This, I'm, I'm going to cake this up. And I'm actually going to use it as um, yarn that I tie my labels with. So if you buy any of my yarns, they're not going to come with the big pieces of paper wrapped around them. They come skeined up and there is just a little tag. It's about that big with the name of the yarn. If I remember to write it on, because sometimes I forget. Because when I pack orders, there's just so many of them. I get into this rhythm and then realize halfway through that I've packed two or three orders and forgotten to, to write the name of the yarn. Luckily I put a packing slip in there so you still know the name of the yarn but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to use that for that. And this I think I'm going to make socks out of. Um, I reckon it might knit quite nicely. Again, um, I will do an update. I will at the end of the, this video, I'm also going to do an update for the previous video about Chips Lemon Pepper. Um, well, the new version of Chips Lemon Pepper. But, oh, I need to sit down. I was kneeling and I need to sit down. This was a success. Um, and even from here, you can see it was a success because you can see there's lots of yellow speckles in lots of places. So... Um, one of the things that I think we needed to get the breaking was the heat. We had the citric acid, we had the protein, we had the dye. That started the breaking process, but I'm guessing steam setting it kind of finished that process off. And I will show you, I'll bring the yarn up and I'll show you what I mean. So when you have a look at the, the salmon, you can see there's a lot of orange, but there is also, there's quite a bit of yellow. Um, yellow specks just in, in various places so yeah here and it's more similar to what we get with the purple pop let me find a purple pop is we have like the, the blue with the pink halo or the purple with the pink halo 
we get similar things. So here you can see we've got the orange and it has a yellow halo. Um, and here it is again, orange with, with a yellow halo. There is a very little one here is orange with yellow halo. Um, so we get a lot of that. We get the blue and the yellow and the green in the avocado. Now, uh, English, I forgot English. Disclosure, you remember after I actually speckled it to begin with, um, I sort of speckled all over the place. I don't know whether some of, so some of the yellow that you see here is definitely from salmon. You can see the salmon here. Some of the yellow, and yeah, you can see like the orange, focus, you can see the orange here, but some of the yellow is the blue and the yellow breaking from the avocado and turning to green. So we broke avocado. This is what it does. I kind of really love this area um, where you have bits of black and avocado and purple pop. It's all just, it's all just mixing together and just creating this absolute mad riot of colour. The one thing that I can't tell, because this is the black here, so there's a little bit of black here. I can't tell whether we blo broke the black because we've speckled all the other colours through it. So I don't know whether any of the colours that we see here are from the black breaking or are just the others. And to be honest, I don't really care. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. I I like this colourway. Um, and as I told you, because I only flipped it once, um, there are areas where there's white. If I was doing this as a standard colourway, um, oh, ow, sorry. <laughs> I keep, I keep like twinging my ankle from the way that I'm sat. I keep sort of twisting it a little bit and it hurts. Um, because I'm sat on the floor. So, as I was trying to say, um, Oh, look at this one. I like this. Isn't this gorgeous? This is why I love Purple Pop. It does these amazing things. Um, this didn't bleed. When I washed it, this didn't bleed. This did. This didn't. So I wonder whether because there is an awful lot of citric acid with the dyes we sprinkle and then we're setting it. And we're leaving it to cool completely before we unwrap it from the cling film. Because I wrapped it in a cling film roly-poly. I wonder whether that helps bind the dye better. And because there's less moisture in the yarn this way as well. Maybe it doesn't bleed as much. I don't I don't know. I'm very curious. Because there is there was a lot less dye on this from Purple Pop to bleed pink. But this bled pink. And the water was pink. Um, and this was fine. And this didn't, um, it didn't bleed into the pot. I had wrapped it in such a way that I could tell there was no, no colour that came out of the cling film from here into, into the water below where this was. But yeah, I keep, because I'm looking through the camera screen, I keep seeing just these little areas where we have had breaking. So this blue would have absolutely been the avocado that's broken and you have this gorgeous deep blue um and you have that in several places where you just have this beautiful blue the other thing that i think i probably did wrong when i first was um speckling is i speckled too heavy and I think if you want to see the breaking, you probably need to be a little bit lighter on the speckling um, and give the dye a chance to um, to spread more by not layering it on top of each other like I did. So I think if we'd speckled lighter on this area, we would have seen a lot more orange and yellow breaking. I know for next time when I actually need to do this with purpose and where I'm dying yarn, where I want to see the breaking. Um, 
I, I'm madly in love with this section. I really am. I just love the yellows, the blues, and the oranges together. But yeah, so I will, um, when I start the socks, I will make sure to, to show them in one of the other videos. Um, and you might end up, if you buy yarn from the shop, you might end up seeing this <laughs> as holding your yarn together. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to dig through my project bag. You might be curious to see the mess that is my project bag. massive project bag it's a giant giant bag from um from cornwall it's a really cool shape and i have multiple projects in here i have my vertices unite which i'm doing as part of the fiber hustle um knit along i have my andrew maori uh weekend light which um yeah, I, it's sort of finished. I think you would have seen in the last video. I have my chargers. I have bits and pieces. I have a, one finished sock. And then the yarn for the other finished sock. Because I can't bother to rest, knit the rest of this sock. Because I'm knitting other socks which are a gift. What else do I need? I have a little baby jumper. Which I designed myself. And it's wrong. So... I need to redo it but essentially uh, my dad was a basketball player so I wanted to do a jumper with basketballs on it but I have some issues with the yoke and the colour work um, <laughs> as you can see the, the, I, by the way I absolutely love this little detail on the cuffs the colours are gorgeous and also this is teal not blue but the camera is making it blue um, but yeah I love these little basketballs. I'm so glad that I was actually able to just do these. But um, yeah, I wanted to design um, a sweater with basketballs um, in honour of my dad who passed away last year. And um, I have I have the pattern. It's it's just about getting the right yoke measurements and um figuring it out and I did it on a baby sweater because once one I can knit a baby sweater really quickly this took me like literally two days to knit beginning to end including the sleeves um but it, it lets me know for example where I've you know my yoke and my color work is too tight here part of that is because of where the seam is on the back and how it's seaming together and where this ends up on the circular needles there's just so much to think about I don't know why I'm showing you all this you don't need to know any of this I actually had a reason for this and I've lost the reason I've put it away where is it oh there it is okay hold on let me put you down you can see my you can see my Batman pajamas and yes I'm still in my pajamas oh this is really heavy so why am I showing you this? Because I took the yarn that we dyed in the last video, which was uh, chips, lemon pepper with a twist um, for a customer. And I took one of the skeins that I'd originally swatched and I knit the Ross hat. And I will knit, I will link the Ross hat because it's a free pattern um, below. And it's it's a skull cap and it has the best detail. Look at that. That is so cool on the top. Um, I saw Ray from the Needles at the Ready knit this a couple of weeks ago. Or, well, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of podcasts ago. Um, and I loved it. It's not been blocked and yeah, I haven't. Um, well, I mean, I have woven in my ends. But one thing that I learned from Andrew Maori's um, I'll Knit If I Want To um, podcast is that while she will weave in her ends, she won't cut them until after she's blocked them because obviously yarn stretches and does different things. I will link, um, I will link her channel below and I will link the video in particular that she talks about how she blocks her knits and how she blocks her, her hats. If she can be bothered to block her, cat, her hats. Um, 
but yeah, so I just wanted to show you how that yarn knit up and the fact that we were trying to create something that was going to look better as a cardigan or in a larger project. And I think this this does it. I mean, the, the light is really bright and it's glaring, but um, I'm just going to fold it like this. Um, can I, if I move this? I turned the video off. <laughs> of course I turned the video off. Right. Um, yeah, so I think having this as a cardigan with the yarn sort of pulling and, and you know, there's little bits, areas where it will self-stripe and there's little areas where you have bits of yellow and the grey kind of going through. And again, you can see the smaller the circumference, the more it tries to stripe and sort of um sort of the more it pulls so if you're knitting this as a as a big piece i think it works i kind of like the way it kind of does this and then this again uh, it, it would have been cool if it does like a weird self stripe um pattern but yeah so this is my little update on the yarn that we dyed last time and what it actually looks like in a slightly bigger project this is 105 um stitches i think 107 100 oh why i don't remember um yeah it's done on on uh, so, um circular needles and stuff um i will link the pattern below I, again i need to show you the top because Look at how cool the pattern is. Like the way that you do your decreases, I absolutely love this. And what's really cool as well is, so while this one's a skull cap, um, or sort of skull cap, you can just, before you start your decreases, you can knit it as long as you want. And this would make a really, really cool slouchy hat. This is a little bit big on me, so it has a bit of a slouch. I have a really tiny head. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm... I'm rambling on. Let me bring the yarn that we actually started this video in back. Ta-da! If you've lasted... Oh, knocking the camera. If you've lasted this long, thank you so much. Um, I hope that you enjoyed another one of my batty experiments um, of seeing what happens. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. It's so helpful. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell so that you know when um, future videos are out. And if you really, really like this channel and you like the content and you think a little bit of crazy never hurt no one, do, um, do go and buy me a coffee or buy one of my yarns because it, it helps um, for me to be able to do more of this. Um, because at the moment I am using my own bare stash to, um, to dye the yarns and it's not the cheapest things, thing to do. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed um, <laughs> the, the craziness this week. And I hope I will see you next week. Bye-bye.